Okay. And um, good. Oh, there's no tabs on this. Oh. Bummer. Jane moved ahead on the assignment without her, but that's what I'm seeing, Jane. And so there's, you probably, um, oh, I see. No, I don't. Um, you think it's probably not called Discourse Wiki, Jane, or if it is, it's not in your Google Drive. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, I did put it out uh, using the form. And yeah. it was called Discourse Wiki, I thought. Well, go ahead and share your screen. Um, so I'm going to have difficulty doing that because I'm not on my... Um, well, then don't share your screen. <laughs> yeah, are you able to see it um, from the folder, Steve? Can you open it from there? From the folder. Well, um, so from the, you know, we use the form to post it up. Can you see it through there? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, I mean, this is a this is a direct translation. Okay, so I can't see your screen at all. Oh, you can't. Why not? Now you can. So I'm seeing an article on the screen. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there we are. So you're not at your laptop, though? Uh, if you want to go on to the next person, what I'll do is try to post it up again. Okay, it's probably just a, did you type it into the form or did you copy paste? Uh, good question. I'll just go make sure I got okay. it. When I, if I look at my third wiki for the path, yeah, so I, I did the same thing as last time, so. Um, oh, I see it. Okay, I got it. Yeah, at the bottom? Yeah, you've got a underscore instead of a hyphen in your URL. Oh. That's what it is. Thank you for that suggestion. No worries. Um, yeah, just look at the previous one. I should have thought of that myself. But it didn't work. <laughs> it still I'm doesn't. so excited it was going to work. <laughs> Um, All right, don't don't waste time on it. I'll I'll go uh, try to post it again. Okay. We'll give it one more shot. So that's the that's the uh, third one. Yep. Yeah, and there's no discourse. Okay. Yeah, so it's, I think it's called Discourse Wiki. Discourse oh, Wiki. <laughs> no. Nope. All right. I'll You're post it up. So, John, um, let me. Um, where are we? Exercises. Yeah, I have not posted anything yet. No, that's fine. It's not like even close to do. So. Um, <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, this is strange. You can't get, oh, here we go. Exercises. There's got to be a place to get everything. And I have, I've done the, the overall, but I haven't built the tabs for it. Um, so let me kind of review this and then perhaps that'll address your question. I'll just kind of go through those five points somewhat quickly. Okay. And hopefully that'll address your question. If not, we'll figure it out. So basically, 
I want you to grab a text somewhere off the web that's roughly a thousand words, newspaper article, anything, it doesn't matter what. Uh, and then I want you to add some meaning and value to it by filtering, linking, tagging, templating, and transclusion. Mostly what you're probably going to do is link and possibly tag. So like if you have, and I'm, I'm going to show you how to play with a larger text. I'm going to bring in one of the Vandendorp texts and we'll play with that. Um, and then you want to kind of do two of those five and we haven't even talked much about templating yet. Um, and it would be nice to have at least four examples of that in your text. And then what I'm going to ask you to do is introduce this new documentation technique. And that might be where your question is. Um, which you can pull off of my code and then I kind of give you an example of how to do that. Um, and then to share it um, as we've done before. So that's kind of the idea and hopefully the form is working. You'll see now that the form is pretty much going to be the, it's going to be the same for the rest of the semester. So mm -hmm. I don't have to create a new form every time and, and we'll just keep adding to it. So, so um, like I said, that was the promised very brief um, description and James you've got it recording right yep okay good so um, so what so you said you had some questions on this John yeah so um, I read through the through this wiki here that you have uh, shared and um, I think the one that sounded interesting to me was uh, the navigable essay one I kind of okay. like the feel of that one so I have to but the code looked like a bear. <laughs> uh, it's, um, yeah, it's, let me, um, I was playing with it the other night and, um, I might have a simpler approach that I hadn't Sure. Yeah, I've got, um, I've got content already. It's just, I, okay. Yeah. It's out. just the approach. Yeah. I could not figure out how you, uh, I mean, I see that you, you did a lot of transclusion and you, um, Oh, the, the code you were, you had in the example, you know, pulled in a lot of stuff from an external source, but I just couldn't figure out how to, right. how to so let me see. Let me, in fact, if you've got your content, let me show you some, okay. um, sort of a, quick view version of it and I'm going to add this um, hmm. so the navigable essay see I'm missing my um, You'd think I'd write a little macro to handle this, but <laughs> I haven't yet. So let's just get rid of this um, color palette. So we've got something that's a little easier to deal to get to the color palette. You go to the control panel, appearance, select palette and we'll make this blue. I think it's rocker right now, but rocker's a little tough to see sometimes. Yeah. And um, actually we'll go down to the high light contrast. This one's good, except I don't like the way it deals with the tab. So that's not going to work. Um, we'll stick with our familiar one. Okay. So what I'm doing here and this you'd have to play with, um, but this is just using tabs which you're familiar with. And the nice thing is that you can build the whole thing and then just change it, right? So it's more the logic that we're after. So what I did with the, I, my title here is assisted suicide. And then I wrote a field, I called it caption. And that's where I put a sentence in. Um, and you can see the sentence right up here. But you okay. could just as easily have put the sentence in on its own. Um, there. And then I say, okay, show me all the, in tabs, 
show me all the things that are tagged assisted suicide. Now, I kind of like, and this is like got some work to be done, but I kind of like the way that it looks with vertical tabs. Um, and I think it goes out there, yeah. And so this is showing the two tabs that are associated with assisted suicide, right? So there's two things that are tagged to assisted suicide, ethical and political. So they both have this tag, right? Okay. And so the code for the thing to which they're tagged, let that sink in. So the political and ethical are children and assisted suicide is the parent. Okay. Yep. Okay, so the children are tagged to the parent or tagged with the parent. And then the code for the parent says, go get the tabs of my children. So get the tabs of things that are tagged with me. So get the, get the, get the, get the tiddlers that are tagged with me and put them into tabs. Okay. Okay. So then I do that all the way through. So then I'm going to go down to ethical and ethical has this caption which i'm not even showing um which i'm going to stick up in here just so that it's more consistent and then ethical is going to have two children as well i think so ethical's children are physicians i guess doctors i called it tagged with ethical and family members, tagged with ethical. Okay. And these both have captions, um, which I'll bring out. And let's look at doctors. By the way, how do you add the caption field? Because I don't think I saw that as a standard field. It's not. You um, you create a field, you type it, call it caption. Oh, okay. And you put the value in here. And caption is a special field such that when it's listed, I'm going to give it some more, put the value in here. This is the tiddler called doctors. Caption is a special field so that when you list something, the, um, the caption shows up instead of the name of the tiddler. So that's, so caption is a special field not to be used lightly. James probably remembers we couldn't figure out why that was happening last year and then we finally figured it out. Okay. Oh my God, where is this stuff coming from? So caption is a special field. Um, so back to your essay. So we've got doctors. Um, so from the bottom up, three levels in, we've got family members and doctors. Um, they're both tagged to ethical and then we've got assisted suicide, which has two. Okay, and so, um, and what are we doing here? Tag assisted suicide, TC vertical. Oh, I know why. Um, because I still have a field called caption with an empty value and I didn't trash it. Huh. And so it's pulling the caption field, so I'm gonna put them back. I knew there was a reason I did that. And then we'll go back to doctors. I should never mess around with stuff when it's working. <laughs> So 
So what this does now is allows us to navigate down and play around with, I don't really like these colors because to me it looks like the gray should be selected, but I believe it's the white that's selected. Yeah. You know, and you can change that in the um, palettes. Um, and we want the tab. Um, selected tab. There's tab foreground for selected tabs. Here are two. Here's this one. Tab foreground for selected tabs. Oh, that's not good. What changed the text? Oh, that changed the text color right. So that's a little dangerous what we're doing, but you know. <laughs> Um, when you when you don't like it, you, it's fairly easy to undo it. I'll show you how to do that. Um, since I'm messing around now, tab foreground for selected tabs. Let's put that back to black. Uh, so foreground must mean the text or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So we want the tab foreground, tab background, tab background. That's tab header background. It's one of these tab border. Yeah. Tab border for selected tabs, tab background for selected tabs. There it is. So now we've, that's a little clearer to me. Yeah. Um, physicians, one of these I killed off. So that's physicians. So my other ethical must be family members. Yeah. So there we go. So this is like another way, this is one way that you might think of it. And I'm not thrilled with it, but it's mostly the logic that we're interested in, not the display. Um, okay. But if I go back to the example that you asked about, let me see what I'm doing in there. Um, I think I'm building a table. Yeah. So let's take a look at that. The code always looks nasty when you first look at it. And um, most of it you can ignore. Why did I give this to you? <laughs> yeah, I watched the recording you made last week and you only showed a snippet of the code. I thought, oh, that doesn't look too bad. Then I looked at the real exercise and I was like, holy cow. Yeah, that, this is not interpretable. Well, I can, I get a sense that it's trying to pull the content from somewhere else, but I wasn't able to decipher where. And it is. And I'm sorry, I should not have given this to you. This is like, see, what I do here is I grab other people's codes and I mess with it until it kind of does what I want. Uh, but then I don't, and then I forgot to go back and fix it. So let's see if we can interpret this. It looks like drill down has nothing to do with it, but let's find the, let's find assisted suicide and see if we can find that. Yeah, it, it, it pops up in something called dashboard. Oh, yeah, you, you right underneath the hyperlink, there's dashboard. I think it pops up there. Yeah, there you go. I'll have to, um, yeah, this is all based, okay. This is, yeah, I, you know what? I think I'm sending you to the wrong one. I've made this, I remade this once. Let me work on that. Okay. Thank you for checking it out. Um, but what I liked about I liked the the look and feel of the um, of the actual essay when you when you yeah uh, I love it right yeah that's <laughs> um, so I so, kind of wanted to do something like that but I had no idea how to set up the code to do that yeah let me let me work on that it'll take me. It'll take me a little while to find that because I've rewritten this code. So, because this is, this was on top of somebody else's code. Okay. For another project. And so I did it, I tried to do it using something that you know here. Um, and you might play with styling tabs to get it to behave the way you want it to. Um, 
So if you look over in tabs, um, the way it's is all going to be handled in CSS. Do you know CSS at all? A little bit? Um, a little bit. Not much, but a little okay. bit. Um, and tabs are a little flaky. So, um, and you could also do it very simply. You don't have to do it in a fancy layout. You could, um, um, because it's really what you're after is, let me do it over here. Um, So that's how you put the caption in. Okay, so that's a transclusion. Okay. Inside of curly braces, the tiddler name followed by two exclamations followed by the field name. And now we're starting to put it in a table. And if you wanted people to link to it, um, we'll put an asterisk, that's a little subtle, right? That's a little better. So, so did you, do you get this code here? Um, so we're just calling these two who's in the jiggers, angle braces, and creating a link to the, to the t political tiddler with that. Oh, I see. Okay. So, um, And I'm going to go back and we're going to take it to political two and ethical two. And we're going to go to political and clone it. I should have called it political one because that would have been there already. And I'll edit it and, um, We won't have this tabs, but we want the same, basically the same content. It's just for the next level. And then I think political we had this is actually ethical. We had um, family members and doctors. And so this shouldn't take us anywhere yet, no. Um, so we have to clone this. And then what we've built is a, is a, um, a logic. Of an interactive essay. Okay. Without really dealing with the code, which is probably, you know, as important. 
And so sysadsa no code. Oh, close. Political two. Oh, I know why. Okay, because we built. This is the part that works. Ethical two. I told you it worked. <laughs> Ethical space to. This is a feature of the new release that automatically updates the codes. That's kind of nice. Oh. Um, and so this doesn't give you that back navigation yet, but it's getting there. Right. So that's a. So there's a there's a, a way to begin to think of it. It's mostly the logic that I'm interested in. Um, so I will, um, I will fix that. And in the meantime, if you want to play with it, you can use the tabs approach. Okay. Which I think logically builds. It's just not very attractive yet. So we're not really concerned. I think you said earlier, we're not concerned with the formal appearance of it or the final appearance. It's really just like the logical operation. Of yeah. Right now we're in the design and the create, um, I'm just terrible in CSS. If you're good at it, go for it. And maybe there's someone else in the class who can help you. Um, I did put a call into the group about how to, um, into the Tiddly Wiki group. I don't know if anyone responded to me yet today about how to, about how to style tabs, basically. Uh, I don't recall yeah. saying that. And I don't recall if anyone responded. Oh yes, this is what I'm looking for. Okay, so yeah. This is like, oh, this is cool. This allows you to build a link to a tab so the selected tab has a link in it. That's very cool. Um, cool, so I'll do, I'll change that in our world. But um, yeah, that doesn't quite do what I was. The only thing I've learned about um, styling tabs so far is the is the way to change the colors of the tabs but there should be you know in the style sheet um, there might be ways to find out about styling tabs but again we're Primarily interested in looking for the Mac tabs macro. Um, so this is the class tab set and tab buttons. So, you know, if you, if you can find those and play with them, you're good to go. But um, looks like tab selected is another class. Um, and it's deep into the, you get kind of deep into it. Yeah. But all you have to, but you have to reset it. It looks like it's set there, um, but you can set, but I mean, again, that's like stuff that you may or may not want to get into. Um, Probably not for this assignment. Because I don't really know how to do it. Um, but I'm most interested in this logic would be great. Okay. Well, that gives me something to work with. Yeah. So, I hope so you'll, be sharing this, you'll be sharing this recording eventually, right? Or James yep. will? Hopefully tonight, right, James? No, I'm going to keep it all to myself. <laughs> I think he said yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. I want to make sure Jane has time for her questions too. So I think yep. I've got enough to, to get somewhere. Okay, good. Jane, you still with us? Yep. Did you figure it out? I hope so. Take a look at me. Um... Oh, did you repost it? Yeah. Oh, capital D. 
Yeah, my rule is for like, I never use, um, why do I think I've seen this before? I didn't, okay. I never use <laughs> uppercase in file names just so I don't, I avoid that issue. Yep, no problem. I, uh, I realized that in the um, instructions, it, it's, it showed it that way, so I. Oh, really? Really? It says, uh, name it discourse-based wiki. So that's what I had named it. Oh, you people who like pay attention to the stuff I that know. I. How, how annoying, right? Creating discourse based wiki. It must be. So cycle four at the bottom, right? See discourse based wiki. Yep. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, no worries. It looks like it's lowercase to me. Yeah, and there's a capital B and a capital W in there. Oh my God, I gotta fix that. These the alternative facts? Alternative, yes, thank you. <laughs> By the way, if you're wondering what I'm doing in these fields, when we get to templating, I'll, I'll be able to show more of this, but um. If you look at the tiddler for creating a discourse space wiki, you'll see way at the bottom, there's this little link to description and template. If you try to edit this, you'll see that there's nothing in it. And so if you're ever trying to figure out like, where's the content coming from? Um, it's probably being driven by a template. And that template is based on some field in the tiddler. Um, so here's a clue that I've got this thing that looks like that. That might be a tiddler name, but my habit, I try to do it. Um, whenever I use a template below this rule, I have in very little, you know, superscript, a link to the template. And in this case, a link to the field called description. Because these tiddlers, the names of them and their tags were brought in from a spreadsheet and I created a link to a description that I could write. And now I can go back and bring the tiddlers in again without overwriting my descriptions. And so this is an example of an object base and a discourse based wiki that emerged together. So I've got some opportunities to create discourse or text and others that are simply objects, which are you know pretty much tiddlers about exercises or, um, or other parts of the course. Um, and so if you want to, so this is what a template looks like. And you'll see these coming up. There's not much. It just says, is this tiddler tagged with exercise? If it is, then transclude the tiddler that's named in the field called description and put its contents there. And then put a horizontal rule and put this line about when the thing is due. Submit this exercise on the date that comes from the due date field. And then in teeny little print superscript, create a link to the description tiddler. That's the one with the text. And then create a link to the template, which happens to be called exercise template. Um, and so when you get to templating, you'll find that this is not a bad um, approach. It kind of works. Um, and you get these nice links down here on the bottom of your and I use those as documentation basically. Um, so, okay, so to James. Um, I'm gonna, ooh, I didn't mean to leave that. That's a bummer. I just lost all those nice changes I did for John because I wasn't paying attention. Well, maybe some of them, we'll see. Okay, so James. Jane, you want to tell me what we're doing here and, and give me a tour and tell me where to click and what to do? Okay, so um, I wasn't exactly sure what to do with this assignment, so I just used it as an example to um, practice some more because I'm uh -huh. new to this. So um, what I, I didn't do last time in the third wiki was use tab, so I wanted to try that. Okay. Um, I also um, wasn't exactly sure 
if in the discourse based wiki I was getting, you know, text from uh, the web or it had to be from in some other format, but I used, I happen to use this. Yeah, text. no, absolutely getting text from the web. Okay, great. So absolutely, yeah. I just, um, you know, a larger article, I just basically took uh, like a thousand words of stuff from, yeah. right? So this is the original article, right? And um, and I just grabbed stuff from it and I recategorized it for the purposes of the, the wiki that we're doing, right? Okay, um, yeah, so this is, yeah, so that's the original and... Yeah, so if you um, flip yep. back to the page, uh, what I did was um, just, um, I thought, you know, I obviously have to give, credit to who the article is really the content's from so i did that at the front and then i wanted to play with the tag stuff because i didn't try that yet so i really have kind of three main sections of headings under an introduction behavior or conservation that make up this um, wiki so far and um i also uh was reading in the description of the assignment how you wanted us to um take a look at um, list filter and, and and do that so I tried I uh, decided that could be useful for like quick links if someone were to come to this page and just wanted to jump to one particular subject um, that might be a way you would use that um, list filter feature so these are you know under those three categories just in parentheses is how it displayed I wasn't sure what it was going to do so I mm -hmm. so and that's exactly the idea so you've got um, so these are your, I'm going to add a, um, just so that we can see the, okay. Okay. So these, these are all sub tabs under the three, right? Right. Got it. Yep. Okay. So what, you know, when the page displays, I wanted to see what would happen if you put two rows of tabs basically to, you yep. know, what how that logic would work and what I realized and I put in my journal um, note was that um, when you are you have two sets of tabs like that you have to start making image decisions because um, I you know in this case I only imported four images because I was just you know yes. trying to learn and, and mess around with it but um, you know when you are messing with things in the second set of tabs and the picture repeats what's you know what's above it it doesn't look right so um that yeah, was, i so wasn't expecting to realize that playing with tabs right it, it, i i learned some stuff about the graphical nature of laying it out yeah and that's like a challenge in some respects um and that can all change but you see the same thing here i think i'm at this on here i'm running three rows of tabs right but you have some other you know, text and points in between. Yep. In mind, I didn't. Um, so it started, you know, the images start to um, repeat. Yes, I see what you mean. Yep. So you really kind of have to look at it like, you know, you have to download a different image or something different for each of the sub tab things. Otherwise, you start repeating images. Right. And I think that that's an important, that's one of the points I'm trying to get across is that as you're designing an interactive text, your thought process may be slightly different. Yeah. And that's, so if, if that, this exercise got you to that point, then it's successful so far. Cool. Yeah. Um, I'm going to move your links up just so that they're, um, in fact, what I'll do is I'm going to take this content and I'm going to excise it. Um, actually what I'm going to do is do a, from your week, you do a save page as, and I'm going to call it, um, Jane discourse wiki. And then I'm going to open up the Jane discourse wiki. Cool. So now I'm working, now I'm working on yours. I own yours now. Okay. I can't change yours. And that's like a, that when you see one of these examples, that's what you do. You just take someone else's code and you start destroying it. When it's all broken, it doesn't make any sense. You do it again, you know, and that's like this, that's the one way to learn. And that's kind of the way that I'm preaching here. Um, so what I was going to do is I'm going to grab this code 
and I'm going to excise it um, into a tiddler called um, quick links that I'll tag to form the excision. So now it's still here. It's being transcluded in as a tiddler called quick links. But um, I'll make that a link instead of a transclusion. Um, quick, am I spelling it wrong? That should work. Oh, I think I'm, I don't know why I'd have to save it. Huh. Oh, there's no, that's weird. Okay, I don't know why it's, oh, I know why, because you've got it, it's, it's italicized in your code. That's what was confusing me. Okay. You've got italics up here and, um, Oh yeah, when I was giving a reference for the article. Yeah. I Okay. And so um just as a general rule if we believe that URLs in their native state are ugly. Oh, okay. And we try to avoid them if we can, then we can embed the link. Um, and sometimes I'll put an HTTP when I just really want to be sure that somebody's going to see it. Um, but, and that's, and then because your URL had flashes in it, it was confusing the slashes that you're using for your, to italicize your code and it was bleeding down into here. So that's what was going on there. Okay. Um, so you've got three things. Um, And why aren't we getting anything there? Because we never. So you've got four tabs, which is correct, right? Okay. And quick links is a tab off of os is tagged to ocelots. No, not yet. Oh, it is because I just created it. And oh, okay. It okay. So let's get rid of that. Okay, I didn't think it had been. No, so you got it. There we go. Okay. Good. And then um, if you want these in a particular order, um, and this, I'm never thrilled with this, but you can create a list field and drag your tiddlers in here and then manually maintain this order. Any ones that are not listed here that are tagged later get put at the end in alphabetical order after the ones that are here. So that's just not, I'm not thrilled with that, but it does work. Okay, because I was trying to figure out how to fake it to do alphabetical order and it wasn't working. Yeah. Um, that's why it's called an introduction. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, and I have done that in the past as well. And now I think we'll see Oh, you, okay. So yeah, and you guys are, you're getting the non pre-release version. So you don't get those things automatically updated. So we're going to leave your tag and introduction as it is. So it will still work. Okay. And, um, and now they're in this order. And I don't know if that's what you want or not, but that's how you put tags in order. Um, Nice. Okay. And so um, what I like about this is that you're doing this nice work with tags. And is there text in introduction? I guess not. Um, There's text yeah, down here, not, right? Yeah, not at the moment. Yeah. Right. Um, and this is where you come to um, a little bit of um, design. It's like, well, does every tab need to have some text, you know, just so that it's kind of clear, like what we're doing there. And you might say, yeah, so let's just 
estimate that we're going to throw in um, 20 words of text. And since I'm too lazy to write, And then that, that's going to give you some of that text before your next task, which you may or may not want. travel websites show you all hotels, right? Well, they don't. Actually, not you can't you. hotel blind. That's me. <laughs> different websites show you different hotels. Some websites may only show you these. I'm getting while music from some place that I don't know where this. it's coming from. But because Trivago compares hundreds of sites, Trivago shows you a better overview of available hotels. And that's one more way Trivago helps you find your ideal hotel for the best. Maybe from that, yeah. It was your life science thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and then this is perfect. And I see, let's, I'm going to take a look at the description. And what you found if you is that it's annoying that you can't get to the links of the tabs, right? You have to go back to the tiddler. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show you how to fix that. We'll see if it works. What was it? It was called tab links. And um, so this, you drag these things over. We hope. And um, probably wants this and this and this and import maybe and reload and look there's a link to your tab. Cool. That's cool. I like that. So where did you get those? So I had, um, um, I got it from there. Okay. And that's the case of where I'm putting a URL and after I just said it's really ugly. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, usually you can drag and drop these into your TiddlyWiki and there's a little bit of configuration. And if it, this guy you find is his stuff is pretty good. Here he tells you how to turn it on and off. Um, so you might want to turn it off by setting display property to none so that you use it for editing, you turn it off for viewing, for example. Um, dummy, yeah, okay. Um, and I had just been asking about this um, a while ago and it happened to be in the, it just happened to pop up today when I needed it. So I asked about it and I got a link to this. And that's, I was looking for it before. Um, so that's like, and there's just tons of things. So if you're ever wondering like, how do I, you know, how do I put, uh, links on tabs in Piddly Wiki, you know, you might, um, you might find something, you might not. Here's TW tabs macro adding a link to the tab and I think it's in here from a long time ago, but, but the nature of an open source program um, is that you kind of poke around and try to find stuff and play with it. And, Students are constantly finding stuff that I've never seen before. And um, yeah, so let's see your approximate population. Um, I had had you naming, putting the name of the image in um, for a while, but you probably don't need to do that. Um, where are you getting? Okay, so these are at the bottom of your conservation tab, maybe? Um, so those tabs are different tiddlers that are linked to the one, you know, conservation. So under conservation, you have a link to the tabs and then you have pictures on the bottom just for the hell of it. 
Yes, I'm okay. just trying to. I'm just trying to yep, learn. Yep, yep, you're just playing. Got it. I just yeah, want to yeah. make sure. So yeah. Yeah. So what, what the title is doing? That's where the title of the tiddler is coming from. You probably don't want that. Oh, okay. And you probably don't want an HR after them because they'll probably sit right. No, they won't sit next to each other. Um, sometimes you can get them to sit next to each other. Um, and let's, yeah, they'll float next to each other now. Oh, good. And that's, you know, so that's, so what I did there was I just played around with the, um, you didn't want the title. And so, and it's, 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 it's really good to play with exactly as you're doing. Um, one of the odd things is that the, we're using pictures and tiddlers and the field is called text. That makes no sense, right? But it's what it's called. Yeah. That's where the pictures go in the field called text. I meant to ask Jeremy about that. I'll ask him in the next podcast. Cause, um, and he'll just laugh and say, yeah, oh well. <laughs> um, okay, and then that the, all those pictures are going to stay. And so you did a really nice job of like using the same pictures across multiple content. And so what you figured out there was you have to put the pictures outside the tabs. Right. Good. That's like, and so now what you're doing is you're, you're getting to see that this, this conservation tiddler has tabs, sort of, but it's not really part of the tiddler, but it's part of its tags. And then it has some photos, these other two tiddlers, which happen to have pictures in them that belong to conservation, but not to the tab. So you really, you you did a lot. I mean, that's why I wanted you to do this exercise. You did a lot of nice work here. Um, oh. So it really, it shows up. So let's look at behavior and you probably did the similar thing in behavior. No pictures yet, right? I think I had one. Oh. Yeah. Okay, but so for our purposes, if we want to see if it works, we're just going to cheat and put this on the bottom of behavior. And it should work exactly the same way. Okay. Yep, and it does. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this, so this turns out to be a very powerful thing. And really the power is right here. That's called a filter. Um, and so what you're doing is learning this critical technique of filtering. Um, and I've written it from the perspective of the writer there on the left. So I'm gauging the act of filtering, that's what you're doing. You're manipulating the range of nodes or tiddlers that are presented as possible choices that can be selected in the given text. Does that definition make sense here? Uh, yeah, I know the word filtering from Excel. So that's what I think of okay. when I read that now. So it, it, you know, makes sense to me. So what are all the possible um, tiddlers that could be available under behavior? Let's just say it's all the tiddlers in your wiki or all the tiddlers in your text, your big text. And so now you're going to manipulate the range and you're going to say, only give me the ones that are tagged behavior. Right. Um, and if you wanted to say, well, I don't know, how about the ones that are tagged conservation too? Um, oops, I messed, I lost one. So now we're going to get the ones that are tagged conservation or behavior. So you can string these filters along. Now we'll get the ones that are tagged conservation and behavior. And I think there won't be any of them, right? Nope, that's Correct. this one. Correct, I don't think there's- Nope, any there well. shouldn't be. We right. wouldn't expect there to be, so right. that's good. Um, and you might've discovered this, but in case you haven't, I'll show you and others watching. Um, if you want to practice filters, you go to advanced search, which is this impossibly small magnifying glass. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and I think it comes up when you click that, I think it comes to here and it starts on standard. But if you select filter, you can write a filter here.
And if that's what you want, then you, then you can copy that and paste it if you want. You know, if you're trying to get the ones that are tag conservation, but begin with an A, um, that are prefixed with an A, and you can keep messing with this, um, um, or that I think N with an S, and um, if you look at filtering, there's a whole set of operators that you can play with. Uh, and so you really, if you, if you do any database work, this is where the database people come. You know, you really can narrow down your filter. Like you can get the, um, the second one or the third one. And so you, you can filter down to one or two. So anyway, so that's sort of a quick lesson in filtering. So that's, um, and then the last piece, um, did you have other questions or can I go on and show you one more piece I was hoping you'd be able to do? Um, so what you're doing here is this code, um, that's not it, this code here, is an example of filtering. And if you use the back ticks, which are the character to the left of the one. Oh, I didn't know what that was. I was trying yeah. to do backslashes. Yeah, back ticks. Um, oh, okay. Um, so I saw it in the instructions and I was like, okay, why isn't this working? Yeah, so generally there's most everything is referenced. The, my wiki is built on top of the tiddlywiki.com manual. So pretty much everything's in there. So if you search for back ticks, you'll see that, oh, I can do superscript and subscript and strike through as well. Um, so that just puts it in red and it doesn't interpret it. Mostly doesn't interpret it. So, um, you know, and that's the level, that's kind of what I'm hoping to see. So how do you put a comment in the code that does not display in the wiki? Um, They go like this. Um, so you enclose it in angle brackets. Oh, okay. It's that. <laughs> okay, I never would have guessed that. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, and that is not, um, I don't think that's tiddlywiki. I think that's HTML. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure it's, oh, I just missed it. Um, right there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's an H, that's not a tiddlywiki, that's just, so what's weird about tiddlywiki, I don't know if you know HTML at all, um, but you can just write straight HTML in it and it will interpret. And you can intermix HTML and wiki text freely. Um, and so if you know a little HTML or a lot of HTML, that's, then, you, then all of a sudden you're doing really interesting things um, where you're like, you know, putting variables into and out of tables, but you can't really do an HTML. So it's, it makes it more like PHP. But anyway, that's, that's how you put comments that won't display. Um, and why would you want to do that for yourself, right? Okay. Well, why would you want comments that wouldn't that don't display? Um, I, for myself, yeah. As I'm learning, I wanted to be able to say, you know, uh, this should do this, right? Yeah. And then save the code and and. Yeah, that's a really good technique. Um, I, I keep going back to like a, the last wiki that I did, and then try to, you know, remember how I did something. And yeah, well, you do. You, you, you figured out the cop, the drag and drop. I hope, right? 
Yes. Okay. Because that, no, we don't retype, only drag and drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, this looks, this looks great. Um, and I don't, I'm not trying to like direct people. I'm really trying to run this as a workshop. So feel free to just move on. If you've got something at work that's interesting, I think in a, in your longer post, which I haven't responded to fully yet, um, to the group, which was really interesting. You talked about this project at work. You could weakify that. I mean, you might have confidential confidentiality issues, so you might not want to use that content. Yeah. But, um, you know, you can take any text that's out there in the world or anything that you're interested in and say, okay, I'm going to make a tiddly wiki out of that. Okay. And I'm just going to keep putting up new ideas in the group. And um, I almost wrote one last night on weakifying the Super Bowl, but I just couldn't bring myself to it. <laughs> um, so Steve, can you explain what the project for February 8th, there's something mentioned on the... Oh, right. That's like soon. Yeah, we're going to change that date. That's obviously not going to happen. Um, I'm going to push that. I'll push that back a week. Thank you. Um, and I'll start that discussion tomorrow or the next day. I'll start that in class tomorrow, probably in the 11 o'clock hour. It's, um, I just wanted you to start thinking about for the second half of the semester, you basically do two projects. I thought one project was too much. You know, spend eight weeks. You don't really have the skills to spend eight weeks on something yet. Um, so I ask you to do two projects for the second half of the semester, and I just want you to start thinking about them now. So if you have to, you know, find some text or buy a book or something like that, that you're, you, you've got to, you have it ready. Um, oh, and you're not okay. going to be committed to it. It's just to get you thinking about like what you might want to do. Um, and I'll, I'll give you about, I gave you like 10 ideas last Tuesday to play with, and I'll give you 10 more to play with. Um, Where are those ideas? Um, those were in the, um, um, where were they? These were, when you looked at the studio projects and initiatives. Oh, I uh, didn't see that yet. So this okay. is, okay, so I have not highlighted this. This is key. Okay. I, this you is know like, really. <laughs> Yeah, this, I really have to um, draw people's attention to this, because this is really where I wanted you to be for this week. Um, and so I guess I didn't highlight it yet. So basically, I'll highlight it here. There's a bunch of projects, and projects are things that I'm actually working on um, that are going to happen. <laughs> and there's a bunch of initiatives, which are, geez, wouldn't this be cool? Wouldn't it be cool if, you know? And maybe they turn into projects, probably they don't. Um, and then you can work on any of these. So if you're interested in, in joining the 9-11 at 20 team, um, then you, you can click on the current and it will take you to the current implementation. And all of these are at various stages of array and disarray. <laughs> um, this is actually a project that I'm, this is actually a conference paper that I'm gonna deliver pretty soon in June in London. Um, and so, uh, and you know, so if you're interested in it, write, say, hey, I'd like to do that, and then I'll give you more detail. Um, this is one that we're doing in, um, also in June in Oneonta, um, using open educational resources. And then more interesting are these um, initiatives. So the Math Wiki, if you're into math, it doesn't seem like that would be, you don't really do math, do you, Jane? Um, just helping my daughter with algebra. Yeah. Oh, maybe. But Math Wiki lets you write. Uh, I don't think this is for her, but it lets you write math symbols. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't think you need this for algebra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But people who are into math think it's great. Um, I'm really into this, this music concept where you can, um, a lot of students are going to navigate, you know, gravitate to this. They can catalog their music or their videos. Um, if you're interested in doing ethnographic work on the web, if you want to be a web ethnographer, if you wanted to, I don't know, follow all of uh, the commentaries about the Trump presidency and, and you have to save web pages and talk about them, you could create this web archive and analysis system. Um, photography is really, really fascinating. Um, this is one of the things I've been playing with for a long time. Um, if you look at my URLs, you'll see 
that they're easy to fix because I hand type them obviously. Um, this is a rather strange one, but the key is that I think there's 250, there's 500 photographs maybe in here, I'm not sure. Um, but you can navigate, and you're very used to navigating first, previous, next, last on one story, but now we have four stories and we can have an unlimited number of stories. So we can go to the first photograph of a female, we can go to the last photograph of somebody who's over 70. We can, and these are not, these are, this is within this current story. Um, you can, and I don't need, this is about sync products or something. I don't know why. Um, you know, the first, so let's see, this is, this is a male over 70 person who cleans monthly with Kleenex, Clorox. So if we go to the first over 70, we are now at, this is the first photograph of a person presented who's over 70, happens to be female, cleans annually. So we can, there's four separate stories interwoven into this. And that's what I'm kind of really curious to see if somebody can create a photo wiki out of that. Um, I get the photo wiki one dimension, but I haven't seen it in four ever. Um, so I, I, and I did, um, John, you saw this. I think I did a podcast on this last Tuesday or Thursday. Um, and that's probably where I introduced it. So um, it's um, exploring possibilities for discourse and object wikis. And sorry, it's a little long, but it, it, I do a little five to seven minute on each of these pieces. So you might, you might find that interesting to follow. And John must have followed it because he found the, nav the, the essay. So, okay. Um, Jane, you might be interested in doing slides because you do a lot of slides at work, right? Yes. Um, looks like my example is dead. <laughs> oh, man. Why? Why? It worked the other day. Um, this is slides. Wiki slides. How'd that get there? Um, I would love to see somebody pick up on this because this concept is, you know, what a, the wiki looks like, but now we can view the wiki as a slideshow, um, which would be really useful because you could use it in a professional setting and say, here's my slides. And then in the slideshow is embedded is all the detail stuff, the text from which the slides are pulled. Um, and you can even have links in your slides to other parts of the macro. Um, and you can navigate, it's got its issues. Um, you can navigate amongst all the different slides and blah, blah, blah. Um, so this is a little funky um, and it needs a lot of work. Um, but the idea here is that you know, you've got some cores of design and you can go forward and kind of build your own. And that's really, it's all about the building. So, um, does that give you enough to play with? Yeah, I'm definitely gonna go look at that section because I didn't know that was there. So that was Yeah, awesome. I'm so sorry about that. Um, and I'll draw attention out to it some more. Okay. It's, under the, it's under the new, what's new, so, um, which is probably not enough, um, but. It's there. <laughs> That's the fourth one, studio projects and initiatives. Um, and of course, if there's any kind of master's thesis project that you're thinking about, it can be done as a wiki. The Tidley wiki doesn't have to be the object of study, though it can be, and it can just be the tool you've used. It's like if you're writing your thesis in Word, nobody's going to say, oh, you're doing a thesis on Word. Um, and so I see Tidley wiki as a Repl potential replacement for Microsoft Word, Microsoft Word, and PowerPoint. So that's what we're headed towards. All good. Yep. All right. Um, James, did you have questions or are you recording? I'm still recording. Good. Okay. Um, but 
on your, you're not, you don't have questions because you're not in this class. You're the recorder. But yes. thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. Jane, um, we'll talk again. Great. Thank you very much, Steve. Thanks. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. Uh, James, if